Welcome to Concordia Theological Seminary and to our podcast. And um, there will be a, we'll go over briefly what's a very brief, short reading for this day. And it's taken from 1 John, the third chapter, um, simply three verses. And it does strike me how the different evangelists and the New Testament writers pick up on certain themes that are found in in the teaching of Jesus. Uh, Luke likes to paint pictures of that our Lord uses, like the parable, the story of the prodigal son. Matthew picks on Jesus as teacher. Uh, the epistle of James sounds like Jesus um, on the Sermon on the Mount. And then John also has a kind of, he picks up on uh, Jesus' maybe deeper teaching. The vocabulary is often simpler, but he takes us uh, to the depth of Christ's love for us. And John also carries on an aspect of our Lord's teaching. So in, this, is, of course, is simple, but it is, it is profound. So uh, he asks us to consider. So see, or idates, see, ah, oh, what kind of love um, now, Dodokan, we know give, has given to us. Who has given to us? The Father has given to us so that we might be called children of God. Now we think of um, John chapter 3, our, our Lord's teaching on to Nicodemus about how we are uh, born again, that is born from on high that we might be called uh, children of God. The kind of love, agape, that's the love, I think, of Jesus' own baptism we see in the, in the synoptic gospels where the Father says, Behold, this is my beloved Son, agape, in whom I am well pleased. Well, consider the kind of love that our Lord has for us. God so loved the world, John 3, 16. Consider the kind of love that our Father has given to us so that we might be called children of God, so no longer creatures, but actually members of God's family. And so we say, what kind of love has God given to us that we might be called children of God? And we are, I love that, Kai Esman, and we are children of God. Now this does have some repercussions. Um, because we are children of God, we should expect that the world will not uh, think fondly of us all the time because uh, the world also treated God's Son in this way. So on account of uh, this, the cosmos, the world, uh, does not know us. That's, they, they, they disregard us. They consider us as nothing. And this is the sinful cosmos, the cosmos that is an enmity with God, on account of this, the cosmos does not know us. Now, why is that? Because it did not know Him. That is, did not know God. Did not know God's Son, uh, Jesus Christ. But then, in verse two, we have another uh, wonderful reminder, and we are called agaptoi. I mean, this is this is the baptismal world word again. You are my beloved. You are my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. The words that are spoken over Jesus are spoken over us. And we who have been loved then go to the agape feast, that is the Lord's Supper, the feast of love. A beloved, now we in fact are technetheu. How beautiful is that? Um, we are children of God. Now there is a um, now but not yet quality to us, but to this, but there's also an air of anticipation, and it's quite joyful that good things await us. So, uh, it is it, it not yet upo. It is not yet. It has not been efan or othe. It has not been revealed to us what we will be. So, a new life does await a life when the kind of limitations and the pains and the struggles which we have in our bodies, will be gone. We will be raised a physical body, but also a spiritual body. It will be even better. It will be completely physical, but it will be even better uh, than it was for Adam 
and Eve. But we don't know yet how this is all going to happen. It will be a glorious revelation. Um, but we know this, that, um, but we do know uh, that uh, when he is revealed to us, we shall be homoi oi. We shall be like him. So um, that we, we have pictures of this, I suppose, in the resurrection of our Lord where he is, um, he's able in his physical body to pass through a door sort of thing. I don't know what it will be for us, but we will be uh, like him in the day of the resurrection. So yet a, gl- a yet more glorious uh, day shall uh, awaits for us. And uh, this is wonderful, uh, the optic word, and we shall see him just as he is. So now we see our Lord <coughs> darkly through a veil. Um, now we see him through the eyes of faith. But on the resurrection, we'll see with our own eyes like Job, and we shall see our Lord as he is in all of his glory. And everyone who has this hope, and this is the great hope, um, in some sense, we probably couldn't even understand what this new world is going to be like, except we should know that it will be glorious because this new world will have been created and recreated by God in His Son, Jesus Christ. This will be a world which is redeemed and which is refreshed and renewed and made better. This is what we have the hope for. Everyone who has uh, this kind of hope um, upon Him. Now, whoever has this kind of hope upon Him... uh, purifies, now this is an interesting thing, uh, purifies himself um, just as that one is, is pure. Now that's admittedly a little enigmatic, um, but it means that we keep our eyes and our sights on things above, that we think first of the higher things. We think of Christ who has come to save us, and uh, rather than the, no, the, the ignoble things, the, rather than like Lot's wife who is always looking back at uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and wanting to go back, or not like the Israelites who are looking back, longing to go back to the safety of Egypt. Instead, we look forward, we journey in the faith, and we look forward to the day the day of our Lord's return, when the promises are completely kept. And it will be a yet more, I mean, this is great for All Saints Day, uh, for there awaits a yet more glorious day. The sun comes shining and we, we, we are in bright array. It's going to be a great and glorious day that we can't even imagine as we see the saints in all their splendor and we join that uh, sacred throng. Um, we look forward to that hope and in that hope, as we hope upon him, um, then we are no, no longer sullied by the things of this world, brought down by the things of this world, but we're lifted up to the love of Christ. Thank you for spending this uh, brief time with a very brief, um, a brief but beautiful reading. God, may God bless you uh, during this, up, this upcoming week. Thank you.